and all the respected faculty members, delegates and participants. Today we have a very renowned and eminent personality, respected Dr. Sivan Kaul sir from IIT Delhi with us. Dr. Kaul sir is a professor and deputy director, strategy and planning at the Indian Institute of Technology, Delhi. He is also the chairman of Atra Microwave Products Limited, Hyderabad, a major company involved in the development of RF and microwave systems in India. His current research interests include RF lens, device modeling, microwave and millimeter wave IC design, and reconfigurable microwave circuits, including antennas. Yeah. Dr. Kolsar has been a member of the IEEE for the past 31 years. He has served as a chairman of IEEE, TD, and TD chapter, India Council in 1988. 1992 <laughs> at COM member and a member of IEEE MTT Society Technical Committee on Microwave and Millimeter Wave Integrated Circuit <coughs> MTT6 and RF Men's MTT21, member of India Initiative Teams of IEEE MTTS, Membership Services Regional Co-Coordinator India, Vice Chairman MGA and MTTS Speaker Bureau Lecturer. He is a distinguished IEEE MTTS lecturer for the year 2014. Dr. Cole is the author and co-author of 210 research paper and 7 state of the art of books and holds 6 patents and 6 copyrights. He is a fellow of the Institution of Electrical and Electronics Engineer, USA, IEEE, fellow of Indian National Academy of Engineering and fellow of Institution of Electronics and Telecommunication Engineers. He has received gold medal by the Institution of Electrical and Electronics Engineering in Calcutta 1977, SK Mr. Research Award in 1986 from the IEEE for the best research paper, Indian National Science Academy Young Scientist Award in 1986, International Union of Radio Science Young Scientist Award in 1987, the Top Invention Award in 1991 of the National Research Development Council for his contribution to the indigenous development of variety based shifter technology, Vesvik Award in 1994 for the development of K band components and phase shifters. Ram Lal Gold Medal in 1995 from the Institution of Electronics and Communication Engineers. Academic Excellence Award in 1998 from Indian Government for his pioneering contribution to phase control modules for audience radar. Sri Om Pratas Bhutin Award in 2009 in the field of electronics and information technology. And Teaching Excellence Award from Indian Institute of Technology, Delhi in 2012. I feel privileged to invite respected Dr. Shivan Kolsar to discuss the micro machine, microwave, and millimeter wave integrated circuit. Really 
very good at one time. And today you can go to market and pick up a chip up to 110 gigahertz. Yes, official. 110 gigahertz. Now you can see that with a new graduate, what will be the situation? And uh, so you must plan today what you want to do. You want to do an MMIC chip at 1 gigahertz, nobody will buy it. So you must think of these high frequency uh, techniques. And many new technologies are coming. The CMOS is one very interesting technology. MMIC is another. There are many, many new technologies which I'm sure many of you won't know. How many of you know a technology called polystrata? Does anyone know in this room? Probably you know. It's introduced after 2011. If you read internet and read microwave journals, there's an article on polystrata technology. Unfortunately, you won't get anything out except typing. Uh, this word polystrata or the web, it's a wafer level device fabrication. Complete radar is done by the USR. Complete radar. So it's not that they are not doing, they're working on it, it's classified. So we can do it in your lab. It's very simple, much simpler than MMIC. But we have to have first familiarity what it is. It's wafer level <coughs> components up to 200 gigahertz. Same process what C uses for the average. So what I'm trying to say is sit on net use mobile phone for chatting and talking to your girlfriend, spend a little bit of time on the net and see what are the latest developments worldwide. Only then we can think of these new techniques and techniques. That's one. Second disease with all of us. So me and you are also Indian. Whenever we do something, we keep it in pocket. We don't want to share with anybody, not even your colleague next to The reason for that is, I've analyzed it over the years, is because we do only this much. If I part away with this much, I'm gone. So if you do this much, if you have a million rupees, you can always give 100 rupees to a poor man. But if you have only 100 rupees, how can you give it to poor So this is another thing we need to learn. We need to share information. We need to work. We cannot set up everything in our lab. We have to work collectively. If you want to say that India will be a technological revolution in a few years' time, all of us have to collect together. One person like me and him is not going to solve the problem of the country. So I think that's all. <coughs> everything can be done in the country. We have everything to do. Much better research facility than anywhere in the world. A month back I gave a talk in Lincoln Labs. I find I am much richer than they are there. Lincoln Labs, MIT. But the only thing is you don't know what's existing in the country. Everything is available today to do the kind of research which I'm going to present to you some of these things. So the topic which I have chosen, micro machine, micro machine <coughs> circuit design. So we started and uh, whatever I'm going to show you here in the next 90 slides, which is basically one and a half hours time, is done by my students. I don't know. So if they can do it, you can also do it. It is nothing great. And I think with his experience, you do everything in your enterprise. You're not a complete one IIT. Everything can be done. So I'll show you, and uh, why I wanted to show you this, it's all the undergraduate postgraduate students in my lab, morning, evening, day, day. The focus, what we do, we can apply the same. Everything in my lab has to go to in the form of a product. Even if it's an undergraduate study, somebody should use it, I should earn money from it. That's the philosophy. Not open-ended research, it has to be goal-oriented research. So, I'm a fellow of IIT, professor at IIT Delhi, now I've taken over as degree director. I'm supposed to give vision for next 10 years. I don't know for what vision I will have. And then also chairman Astra Micro. So I have basically experience in industry, experience in academia. I'll show you how this can be managed. It's very, very important. So this is the center, some of you may not know. Well, it's called Center for Applied Research in Electronics. It was established in 71. I joined in 77. And my boss was a lady. Ladies are very nice to work with. And right from day one, <coughs> goal-oriented applied research in specialized areas of electronics. We don't want to venture into simple PCB making and other things, so those can be purchased at very cheap strategic electronics. Something to radar, as you pointed out. Chip development, CMOS, transceivers, reconfigurable circuit. Those are not available, they're not going to be available. So these are the areas which we do. And we have state-of-the-art system design software. That's special. I can launch today, we are the best in the world, in my small lab. I have softwares worth roughly 20 crores. Any software you think I have, 30 license. And hardware, I'll show you later, 110 gigahertz, complete facility with probe station. I can do any testing. And I don't think these kind of things exist even in labs like MIT. They don't have money to do these kind of things. So this is why how we set up. IIT Delhi doesn't give me anything. It's 5%. <coughs> 1% of 
on the glass floor and for cleaning of my room and water and other things, 5%. 95% of funding is generated to projects, both from India and abroad. And this is one of the things, initially we thought, you know, getting easy money would not lead you to real good research. So if you know that tomorrow, if I don't have grant, I lose all my PhD students, then you work with them. So this is the fundamental philosophy of our center. 95% of funding comes from outside. Even my mobile bill is paid by my project. My travel is paid by my project. I don't take anything from my aid. And we have over the years 50 significant technology transfers since 1982. One of them is the phased array, uh, which is in production now. So we have three research groups. So I have microwave group, then we have microelectronic signal processing. We added two more. One is called non destructive system group. And uh, very recently, <coughs> a few years back, we have taken a faculty member from Stanford, who is an expert in uh, nanotechnology. Now, you have seen <coughs> hundreds of papers come out every day in nanotechnology journals. Growth of carbon nanotube, go cobalt nanotube, zinc oxide nanotube, paper comes out, paper comes out. What is it used? We don't have even a single device. Coming. So, what I'm trying to say, we have expertise in fabrication of carbon nanotubes, growing carbon nanotubes. Translating into a device is something which we lack for them. So don't only look at publications, look at also application. <laughs> so this is the company what I work for, Astra Micro Products Limited in Hyderabad 91. These are leaders in RF microelectronics. We have right now 700 employees. Not even one graduate student we get who is a knowing RF. Not even single. IT people, biotech people, there's nobody RF who can work on day one design of the city. So that's the problem. Otherwise, we can take 100 people today if there are RF engineers available. We manufacture RF micro system for defense, space, telecom, and metrology. And uh, since I became the chairman, we introduced several new technologies are under development with three groups research, development, production, special facilities. Special facilities we create when we get a big order. Like we got an order from an Israeli company. 900 crores. So what we do is set up a separate division for them so their quality and other things are. And uh, this company is roughly making about 20 to 30 percent profit every year, last four years. And today's my order book is 1,000 crores. So if you produce 50 RF engineers, come down there, all of them will be absorbed. In fact, many of them are going to Qualcomm and other companies. If there's a person who knows a little bit of RF design, I can recruit him in my company. I need at least 200 RF engineers for the next four years. So we have openings. So please come down and listen. I just thought I'll give you some introduction about it. Now let us start with the contents. Why is micro machining important? Of course, so we introduce some of the structures at micro millimeter wave frequency. I'm not going to use even a single equation in my presentation. I don't use them in the class also. Large size membrane consideration. So when you think of the research, you must think that tomorrow, after two years, I have to have a product which will sell. Do research in such a way that it sells. Otherwise, it will be in your pocket. Nobody will take it. And money is important because you get government grant, you don't bother about whether it sells. I don't get government grant. I have to earn the competition. Then how we can make ISO micro components, design and development, antenna development, what is the design methodology, different patches, fabrication issues, sensitivity analysis, how we can build arrays which we can sell uh, commercially. Then actual circuits is one of the things which mentioned is switch. Switch is used everywhere. Yeah. And today also I can tell you you cannot buy it except one company in the US called Red and them sells it. But when you buy it from them, half of them don't work. They lie. <coughs> then reconfigurable circuits, as you circuit filters and I showed some of the examples. Since I work with company, so we are now joint projects on micro machine phase shifters for transmitter seal module. There's a requirement of 10,000 transmitter seal modules in the years to come. And each one will be costing tens of thousands of dollars. So you can see the business. And profit margin is 500%. Because it's technological good. So we are going to develop this joint thing in the industry, finally put it in a module. This is called transmitter seal module. And tens of thousands of them are used in one So it's a billion dollar thing. But many times I hear the IT experts in the uh, lectures by Dr. Narayan Murthy, Dr. Narayan Murthy. And they give figures of 15,000 crores was the money which we earn uh, by sell selling IT services. And if you look at the people like you who join the Infosys and are posted to US, you work in DHL. What do you do? Just do some software bugging and other things. 
We're not really doing development. He talks of 15,000 crores, one red of Admiral Gorbachev, which we are negotiating with, which we negotiated with Russia, is 500,000 crores. One of them, one radar, regional radar, costs million dollars. So look at that. If we buy all those things, I think it will be maybe million dollar, million crores we are importing, and we are just saving 15,000 crores on software. It's totally disproportionate. But we don't put those things in press and other things because these are classic military things. But hard fact is that we import 99% of these kind of things. Uh, so I will show you how we went five years back and started this program and how we went for the course of action. And they are very simple to do. It doesn't require any special software tool. It doesn't require it uses only confidence. You have to have confidence to do these kind of things. I write on 19 projects costing about 15 crores with me. And uh, these are the developments of these projects. Now let's look at electromagnetic spectrum. In India, we use mobile, we use wireless links. All of us think that RF, conventional RF is up to 5 gigahertz. 2.4 gigahertz is one frequency, 5.08 is another I to be eight oh two. But if you same person, this is the frequency used for conventional wireless links. If, more, if uh, one of you tomorrow apply to Georgia Tech and want to do master's studies there. Don't fool yourself by telling them I'm an RF engineer. But RF engineer in Georgia Tech means 140 gigahertz. They work at 90 gigahertz, 100 gigahertz, 220 gigahertz for wireless things. So this is the new definition of RF in this dotted line. Anything from very low frequencies to 300 gigahertz is called RF today in the US. In India, RF is 2.4 gigahertz. So please think of that when you talk to a professor in Georgia Tech. So I'm working at RF. You will say, oh, 220 meters circuit development, you know? You have never heard. So update yourself. So these are the applications. And a lot of applications, ultra wideband radars, uh, wireless LAN, PCS, satellite communication for in this wireless communication area. And I understand another, uh, your group here has a strong group in wireless. So I think uh, look at and update yourself in terms of the frequencies. And at IED Daily, uh, we work up to 110. We did projects at 140. Uh, we are planning to put it there and expand it to So we update ourselves because this is what the market needs. Now, revolution in wireless communication technology, everything in future will be wireless. Everything. You don't have to go to doctor. And in the gadget here, it will transmit your ECG to doctor. So you must know what is this wireless technology. Low cost, short range links required for wireless communication of high quality videos. I don't need to connect a wire like this future. Projector will have a 60 gigahertz link to laptop because speed at 60 gigahertz is very high. So you won't have frame by frame uh, picture. And then high video content things will come directly onto your projection. 60 gigahertz, 220 gigahertz are the frequencies which people work worldwide. On demand video delivery through communication network, right now we cannot download a picture. Uh, you try to download it in the net, it's hell. So 60 and 120 gigahertz are the frequencies which people are working in the US. Collision avoidance radar, of course, we're not very really rich to own BMWs, but you see a lot of BMWs in all the cities today. So to prevent accidents, 77 gigahertz is the radar which is fitted into that. And after 26, 11, 9, 11 in US, high definition images are at every security location in the US. And 140, 133 gigahertz are used for that. Wireless sensors for energy harsh testing, and this is important. Body parameter monitor drug delivery system. Now, half of the population in India are diabetic. Now, most of us are shy uh, to go to a doctor because he will uh, take away blood sample, then measure the blood sugar, and we you know become red the moment our blood sugar is high. So we need systems where we can privately see what's my blood sugar without taking it. Japanese have developed a 60 gigahertz cross. It's like a vending machine. You touch your nail, it tells you blood sugar is this much. Nobody sees. So these are commercial applications of many different ways. And then drug delivery systems. We use a band-aid kind of patch, insulin patch, developed by Israelis. We donate it under RF generator. It releases insulin, controlled insulin. So we don't have to actually inject today. So things are changing today. And millimeter waves are very, very useful for this. And I was reading that in 2015, I think mobile web will overdo. Everybody will be seeing web on this mobile. Nobody will sit and have time to do on the web. So if that is the thing, 
we need extremely high speeds. And we're not going to use 2.4 gigahertz or 5 gigahertz for this. I think in Japan they now go 100 to 60 gigahertz. So you will have high frequencies coming into the picture in the future. So we need data transfers at very high speeds and extremely low power and small form factor. Nobody likes fat people today. Everything has to be slim trim. So thin is in. Look at the mobile phone. iPhone 5 was released. You see the queues in the US. Beautiful gadget, you love it. If you have iPhone in your thing, four girls come to you. I <laughs> swear. <laughs> Don't mind me saying that. Easy scalable things. Another thing which is very important. What do we do in India? We make a 4x4 array. And then somebody gives you a project 10 by 10. Redesign everything. We need an architecture which is scalable. 4x4, I should connect another 4x4 tile, another 4x4 tile. I don't have to do further R&D. It's called scalable. So architecture must be such I can put these units together and make it bigger. Extremely low production cost, which we don't have concept in India. 100 rupees, 200 rupees more, 500 rupees more doesn't make a difference. In the United States, one cent makes it. So technology should be set, so I should be able to produce multifunctional. Now I should have 10 radios built into the mobile, right now they are pod radios. So by not changing this architecture of the hardware, I should be able to change bias voltage from 2 volt to 4 volt, everything should change from 800 megahertz to 1 gigahertz. Reconfigurable architecture. And MEMS is very, very important for that. And then space and defense is mission critical readiness. So wireless communication devices will have to operate at high frequency of wide bandwidth. Whether you love it or you don't love it, it will have to go to millimeter waves in future. It's coming already. Intel's next laptop has a 60 gigahertz built-in radio. 60 gigahertz built-in radio. In future, you will have 220 gigahertz. Obviously, these frequencies are not going to be used for millimeter wave communi uh, kilometer communication, but short range wireless links, these are very, very useful. Now, this is the convergence of radio frequency, microwave, millimeter wave. There is a tremendous growth in ICT. We all talk of ICT. Our ministry people think ICT is 2 gigahertz, not 2 gigahertz. And medical applications have been at very, very few gigahertz. There's continuous upgradation in radio frequency technology and community circuits. Trend is towards high frequency. And this is because we go to high frequency, we need to introduce silicon micro machining, as I described, MEMS. Data transmission line architecture, CMOS plus MAN, and I have not used all this data here that's most important for future years to come. And if you do that, you will have increased integration, smaller size and weight, and we can then have our circuits fabricated up to which work up to 220 gigahertz. And both teachers, uh, industry people, all of us have become smart, and we have communication with our satellite security medical system uh, operating in one to 220 gigahertz. So we have to have Total change in the methodology of teaching, we teach something which is 20 years old. Describe a klystron. So a person looks at the book, klystron has a bunch of cavity, uh, it has catcher cavity, you draw a field line, neither the teacher understands nor the student understand, you get eight out of ten. That kind of teaching has to be totally obsolete. Design oriented teaching is important. I must teach you how to design a loop hospital which will actually work with cutoff frequency to be and do an experiment along with it. So that you feel, no, I can do a component design. What the teacher taught in class actually works. Our teaching is mugging. So you are happy because you get nice, nice grade. We are happy we finished our thing. When you go to industry, they find I got a junk. This actually happened. I attended a workshop on Wipro to see what kind of training needs we should do to students. They find all the students who come out of the colleges, including some of the prestigious institutes, are pieces of junk. They just know how to speak nice etiquettes and other things, but they actually are not productive. We need to give them retraining. The retraining is very expensive in these areas. So we must change it into some of the newer things <coughs> to be very Now, this is why micro machining is important. Now, if you look at a uh, printed circuit board, I'm sure all of you have seen printed circuit board. FRP4 with a transmission. <coughs> this is what the FRP4 board is. This is a dielectric. Forget silicon. This is a dielectric material, FRP4. On top of it is conductor and bottom side is copper. You have seen a PCB sheet. So that, in our terminology, is called micro strip line. It's called a micro strip line. So you can build every circuit using this micro strip technology. And if you use gallium arsenide as a substrate, you can build MMICs with proper same Now, in the micro machining, what we do, 
we create a small air gap here and we use a high dielectric constant material. So I'm using silicon. We can use silicon or aluminum, gallium mask, and many materials can be used. The silicon is mostly profitable. So what happens? If I put this air gap zero, that means when this conductor here, my dielectric constant is very high. The dielectric constant is high. So what means the wavelength in this structure is very small. Microwave frequency or component size depends on wavelength. So the moment I create air, I am creating an artificial dielectric whose permittivity is close to air. So there is a term called effect of permittivity reduces, almost becomes air. So this is convenient circuit dimensions and millimeter wave frequency because wavelength becomes that of air. Otherwise, wavelength gets shrunk by a factor under root ER. So if silicon has dielectric constant 12, the wavelength gets shrunk by a factor of 3 and a half. So if my dimension was 1 millimeter, it would be shrunk to 0.3 millimeter. Three times is very large in these frequencies. But problem is, how do we maintain this air gap? Earlier, we can do a CNC machine and find an air gap, but it's very really expensive. And air gaps of the order of microns, a few hundred microns. Repeatedly do 10,000 circuits with the same air gap is not possible using a machine. So we use a technique called valve micro machine. Simple, we get 100 silicon, and we open the body oxide layers. I'm not going to go into the micro terms, we have experts here. Then have some masks we open uh, pattern on this one, then give it in simplistic way protection hydroxide. And you the 111 plane. Which is much faster, so you can create a trench which is at 55 degrees, and I can stop it at some layer called edge stop technique. Structure like this can be very easily realized, but my PhD students do it using petrodes, they don't use a very sophisticated technique. So, if you look at this structure, so we can have this structure sit on a metal plate, and on top of it, I can deposit silicon dioxide, silicon nitride, and have this conductor. So, this structure resembles exactly this structure, except that these walls are too thin. It doesn't create any problem to us as long as the conductor sits on the air gap. So this process is called micro machining, and I don't need to explain, he's an expert in this area, he can do it here in the next. But we need to go ahead and see how we can make circuits. So this is one major advantage. If you're making an antenna, antenna is very important thing, let's say mobile we transmit it. So we take a silicon substrate. I create a structure called microstrip patch antenna, and the length of this is half wave length long, lambda by 2. Now, as I said, lambda is very small because we are using silicon, which is the electric constant 12. Then I find its input impedance, and I measure to 50 on mine, that is an transport. This is for patch antenna design. It's very simple textbook. But if I make it on silicon, I will have very high loss, and it is very low, and there are Modes which are called higher order modes because some of space on this higher constant. The radiation efficiency of the antenna is very, very poor. Because most, since it's a high dielectric constant material, most of the wavelength is in dielectric. It is not an efficient wavelength. We want no dielectric because we want to be to rate. So, what do we do to this? I create this air gap. The moment I create air gap, put the same circuit on this. What are the advantages? Now, this is lambda by 2. Lambda becomes 3 to 4 times larger. I can have a very really big batch. Then my dielectric constant is almost air. So I get extremely low loss, <coughs> no higher order modes, high efficiency. The gain becomes three times. It's a huge improvement by creating an air gap. Less frequency variation, high bandwidth, and most important from production point of view, if I have slight change in the dielectric constant, could be because of batch to batch variation of silicon, could be because of temperature change. If you operate in Pakistan or